So good morning, everyone. Uh, I would like to call the Brimfield Township Board of Trustees meeting to order on May 6th at 8 a.m. Uh, can we have a roll call, John? Uh, everyone present, Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Nick? Yes. Okay. We yeah, will. Uh, good. All right, we're all here. We will forego the Pledge of Allegiance just because of audio issues, uh, but we will have a moment of silence uh, for reflection. Uh, everyone yes. Yes. Okay, I want to thank everyone for being here today. We will start with our announcements and correspondences. We'll go around the room. We'll start with Mike Kostinski. Any announcements or correspondences? Uh, just the usual. I've had some water calls, uh, and uh, Dave and I have worked through them, so we're all we're good. We did have a just so everybody knows, we did have a resident on the corner of uh, Edson and Sherman that was worried about a tree falling on the road, but it was roughly 20 feet off of the road. They wanted to know if we would come cut it down for them, but uh, it's too far off the road. So we, we, we did not do that. And then we just had a little uh, issue down there on Burnett that Dave was uh, met with this morning. So stay tuned. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Sue Fields, any announcements or correspondences? Uh, no, I don't have any. All right, thank you so much, Sue. Um, for me, announcements and correspondences, the only uh, correspondences I've received was, a, um, we've had two complaints recently about four wheelers and ATVs. One was uh, private property, but the other one was on the roads and streets. I have forwarded that over um, to, to the chief. Um, Chief has been looking into that. Um, the resident was concerned, Sue, it was actually back in your neighborhood with four wheelers and uh, ATVs rolling around on the roads back there um, and some concern about patrols. Um, but I know that the police department's been back there. I've talked with uh, Chief about it and I've seen them drive through there, but they're just going to hopefully increase patrols a little bit in that area. That's the only thing that I have received recently. Uh, moving on, we have no scheduled meeting guests today. Um, I think we need to table the meeting minutes until we get back into um, an actual forum where we can sit down and read through those and sign off. I agree. Um, I just make a motion for that. Yeah, I'll make a motion to table the minutes. I'll second. second. I'll second. <laughs> all right, all those in favor, Mike? Yes. Two. Yes. Nick. Yes. And we are um, recording these. Not only are we doing these meetings live, but we are recording them and then releasing them to YouTube. So if people had questions, the information is available easily for them. Um, we have our agenda. Everybody should have an agenda in front of them. Um, is there any additions or changes to the agenda? I have an addition for the cemetery. Okay. In the old pine in the old pioneer section. I would like to meet with my committee and design some type of a, a post or a sign that indicates that is our settlers, our settlers section. And that money would be taken out of the funds that have been allocated to that project. All right. Cemetery so, number one would just be sign. Yeah, pioneer, uh, put it as uh, number two pioneer section sign. All right. Um, All those other, in favor? Oh, wait, ahead, any Jeff. other additions from anybody or changes? Mike, do you have anything? I am I am good, Nick. Um, under administration, I'd like to add number one, uh, Kent Jed, just so I can give an update from our recent meeting. So I will make a motion to approve the amended <coughs> agenda with administration number one, Kent Jed added and cemetery number two pioneer section sign added. I need a second. Second. I will second that. Okay. All those in favor, Mike? Yes. Two. Yes. Nick. Yes. Motion passed. 
Next on our agenda is purchase orders. I was at the town hall last night and reviewed and signed those, so I'll make a motion to approve purchase orders. I'll second that. I also signed and approved yesterday. Okay, all those in favor, Mike? I'm going to have to abstain. Two? Yes. Okay. Yes. Motion passed. I went to the town hall last night and reviewed the warrants, so I will make an, a motion to approve the warrants. Second. All those in favor, Mike, abstain. Two. Yes. Nick. Yes. Motion passed. <clears throat> All right, um, public comments or questions. At this time, I have no submitted public comments or questions. Mike Kaskinski, do you have any? I'm good. Sue Fields, do you have any? No. John Dazel, did you receive any? I did not. Uh, department heads, have you had any public comments or questions? I do not. No. 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 Nope. Oh, I gotta unmute this. Right. No. Okay, with that, we'll move on then to any safety concerns. None. Okay. Hearing none, we will now move into the business portion of our meeting. Uh, we will turn the floor over to the police department. Steve, it's all yours. Yeah, <clears throat> thanks, Nick. I appreciate it. Uh, just a couple of items I wanted to bring to the board's attention this morning. <clears throat> just an update I've been giving you regularly for our meetings, but I'd like to just pass this information along each time we get an opportunity in a meeting setting that we've had uh, no lost time for any of other police department staff taken for COVID-19 or of any uh, police department employees tested positive for COVID-19 as of today's date. Uh, the mobile speed monitoring trailer is currently deployed on Old Forge Road. We previously had that deployed over on Townwood Road, but it's now currently deployed over on Old Forge in the area of the power station. I'd like to take a moment to recognize Brian Gardner uh, Brian helped us out recently with a couple of different cases, active criminal investigation cases we were working on, and I wanted to take a moment to recognize Brian for his help. Uh, it was really beneficial in bringing uh, some resolution and moving a couple of cases forward. So, Brian, I want to just give you a, a tip of the cap to say thank you for your assistance on those cases. It's very much appreciated. I also wanted to make the board aware this morning, um, the Brimfield Police Department recently received our final certification from the Ohio Collaborative for our policy standard compliance in six established areas. Our on-site assessment was completed virtually and they did that with us on April 15th and we were notified of our approval on April 21st uh, just a couple of weeks ago. I provided some attachments with my report for the board so you can see the letters that were sent by OCGS and our certificates. So this was one of our goals for uh, calendar year 2020. And I wanted to let the board know that uh, our review and our uh, assessment was successful. So we've reached compliance for the uh, collaborator for this year. I also want to uh, let the board know that Officer Brett Dinkelman uh, recently completed a series of 11 training modules regarding school threat assessment training, and that training was provided through the Ohio Attorney General's Office. <clears throat> this training was recently certified and by myself and also Superintendent Dave Hefflinger. So with that, We'll, we, we will be receiving a $500 grant that will be issued to the Ohio Attorney General's Office our Department. So I just wanted to make the board aware of that piece of information. One final item I didn't necessarily include on my report for you, but just wanted to bring to your attention and particularly John's attention. When we get an opportunity, John, maybe over the next month, if we could schedule a very brief records meeting, probably five to 10 minutes max, yeah. if we can do that. I just have to update an RC2. That's really all I have, and it'll be pretty I know, and we had some stuff we were waiting to put together, which we got. We just, it, coronavirus stuff just kind of. Oh, I know. Up. But I'll send you a couple dates if that works. That'd be fine. Okay. Yep, that'd be great. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. Uh, that's all I have this morning for the board, unless you have any particular questions for me. I have no questions at this time. Anyone else? All right, you guys continue being safe out there. Thank you for all that you do. Uh, we will move on to fire department. The floor is yours. All right, you there? Yep. All right. Sorry, I'd unmute myself. Um, where are we? Okay. Uh, fire department, just a few updates for you. Um, our full-time hiring process has been completed. 
uh, we have offered and they have accepted to two candidates. Uh, those two candidates are Jake Butcher and Alex Wayne, uh, all both from or both of them from the local area. Um, super excited to get them started and just to let you know, so this just gets us back up to where we needed to be. Um, this was an additional staff. This was staff that we were lacking. Um, I'm hoping the start date of June 1st for them. Um, that is pending really the physical and some paperwork uh, issues. Um, as far as uh, swear in and all that stuff, we'll, we'll have to postpone, you know, and see how this plays out because I, uh, I don't want to forego that, but it may be after they're hired. Um, so that's kind of an update on that. Um, like I said, again, I'm super excited to get us back to uh, the staffing we need. Okay. Um, just do we need a do we need a motion to accept this information that you gave us, Chief? Uh, I, at this I would point, or do we wait so. till we swear them in? Well, I would like to have a motion if if we think that's appropriate to uh, go ahead and accept those names, John. Well, are you having higher dates? Have you decided all that yet? I'm sorry, I was right. Uh, we're so. w yeah, we're pushing for um, well June first start date, but higher date would be contingent upon um, the physicals and a couple of things that they have to have coming back. Oh, then we'll hold that motion off then until they pass those physicals. Uh, uh, for me. Dis discussion, is that is that how we want to do it? Or do we just want to do it, do the motion on a, a contingency that says it's contingent upon the passing, that way they can just move forward when we're done with it? Because we don't need oh, this in week. He has 6 1 effective date, right? Greg, you're kind of putting the two together there. The start date or their hire date are going to be the same date. Well, no. Um, so maybe I messed that up. So June 1st, I'd like to get them in here, but say they get the physicals done, I don't know, three days from now. I may possibly want to start them earlier. So I agree with Nick. Well, let's go ahead and put the motion in place uh, for hiring, and then uh, I'll do start date later, but I can do that anytime. Okay. I would like to make that motion. All right, yeah. tell me what you want me to write down. Motion, motion to hire Jake Butcher and Alex Wayne for firefighters. Craig, we need to do those. This, wait, hang on, John. We need to do the separate motions because one's going to have technically seniority over the other by how we do this. So yeah. what are you putting forward first? How are you doing that? So so the way we've always done it before is Jake Butcher would be first and then we will separate that by one second for Alex Wayne. Yeah, first. so we need to, but we should do those as separate motions so that we have that documented. Okay, I'll let suit right. that then. All right, let's okay, do Jake well, Butcher okay. effective after the completion of <clears throat> Contingent on completion of um, physical. All right. Okay, I, uh, I need a second on that. I will second that motion. Okay. All those in favor on the Jake Butcher, Mike? Yes. Two? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so then we would do it the same way. Move to hire Alex. Um, what's Alex's last name again? Wayne. Greg. Wayne. W A I N. A I N. Um, effective after the completion of physical. Um, I need a motion for that. I so move. A second. All second. All those in favor, Mike? Yes. Two. Yes. Nick. Yes. Motion passed. All right. Thanks, Greg. All right. So, sorry, I could have made that less confusing. <laughs> sorry okay. about that. All right. So we're, we're excited about that. So we're going to move forward with that and I'll keep you updated on their actual start dates. Um, the only other update for the fire department is the kind of just a COVID-19 update. Um, personal protective gear. We have been able to get our hands on stuff slowly again, um, but we do have enough stuff and we do have surgical masks that came in and those were given to us by uh, Portage County EMA. I was able to get 300 of those, so 
uh, wanted to thank them for providing uh, surgical masks for us. And you're going to keep stacking up, right? Yes, I am uh, constantly stocking up because uh, this isn't going to end in a week or two weeks or six weeks. It's going to be here. Yep. So, um, and that's all I have for the fire department. We're just, uh, you know, running calls and staying quarantined. So. Well, I just want to interject here where I've had a number of our residents that are sewing masks and uh, they've given them to me and it's been really good because I've been able to check with residents and make sure that they have at least one and I'm handing those out to whoever needs one. But um, I just appreciate how the residents have all worked together here to make things better for us. And I thank all of them. I get. I guess I would second that, Sue. We've had multiple phone calls from people wanting to donate, and uh, I couldn't name all their names, but uh, yeah, the community is really supporting us. Hey, Craig, I got a question for you. Yeah. Have you heard anything about this insanity of Walmart and Lowe's? I mean, everyone is quarantining. I drove up there to eat at A1 Kitchen. That place was packed. Well, I that haven't heard saying what heard the anything. hell are our leaders thinking? I uh, I personally went to Lowe's the other day and could not get in and then went there the next day. It seemed just as busy and was let right in. So I, I don't know. I don't know their policy. <clears throat> Good. I mean, that has nothing to do with social distancing. Um, I mean, it goes against everything that we're trying to do. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they're counting people. That's what they're doing, but I. I I don't know their policy. OK. Um, that's all I have for the fire department, unless you have any questions. Not at this time. OK, um, rolling into admin stuff. Um, one of the main discussions we need to have is, as I just said, I don't believe this COVID thing is ending tomorrow or in six weeks or 10 weeks. I think it's going to be here for a long time. With that being said, uh, with what we're hearing with the governor and things like that and business starting to open back up, uh, do we want to have the discussion on lifting the temporary work from home order and coming back to work? Admin staff. So currently the only individuals we have teleworking would be administrative staff. Police, fire, road department have been in working. Um, consistently. Uh, our staff have been uh, available. They've been doing work. Um, we've been able to telework them, but the question exists now, knowing that this is going to be in the foreseeable future where there's there's no really end of the COVID. Do we start to bring those individuals back to the workplace? Um, and my question to that as we talk about bringing them back is are we able to provide a safe work environment for them? I think that has to be the first question. Um, and looking at the environment that we have here, um, each individual has their own office, correct, Craig? Yeah, um, I guess I'll just jump in with my opinion there. Um, the purpose of getting the surgical mask was to be able to provide those uh, for the admin staff, um, be able to provide them with uh, the thermometer monitoring, and each individual own, has their own uh, office, which they can limit the uh, six-foot space or exceed that six-foot space. Um, also with that, I want to put in place, you know, working with zoning, working with uh, uh, the admin staff over here, you know, policies for, you know, for, hey, if you don't need to come in, you know, call us, we'll meet you at the door, things like that. So I think those things should, should be strictly in place still, um, but I would feel comfortable at whatever your guys choose as a time frame to bring them back. So you mean so restricting people from coming in as in the citizen. So if they need a zoning permit, we would start doing that by appointments, very similar to what the state of Ohio is doing with the DMV now. Right, and, right. And, and banks. Yeah, yeah and we banks actually can do have it. in the zoning office and, uh, you know, Mike or Jenny could attest to this. We have a camera right on the door. I mean, if someone knocks at the door, we can look at that camera, you know, meet them at the door, put a sign up that says call then we can decide whether they come in or meet them at the door and hand them whatever they need. So we can restrict that access and, and maybe we go as far as 
you know, like other people are doing, if you don't have your own mask, you don't come in. Right. Well, I think that needs to be part of that. The public would be required to supply their own mask, right. uh, but we would supply for our staff. Uh, where what's the status on being able to put the plexiglass over the over Rochelle's front window there for interaction with the public? Um, Dave, are you there? You were. Working hey, on am that. I muted or am I there? You yeah, now we can hear you. Oh, Dave, you hit your mute button again. There, All right, now. Yeah, okay. you're good. Okay, uh, I'm planning on uh, putting a plexiglass up tomorrow. Were you able to find some? Well, I haven't had a chance to go to Lowe's and look yet, but I'm get into that when I get a chance. But my plans were for tomorrow, okay. if I can get a piece. Either there or uh, go to Hartville True Value or something. We, uh, if, if Dave happened not to be able to get that, we put a table in front of the window, which actually adds uh, more distance <clears throat> that people have to stop. So. So we have a safe distance uh, from where they can get to Rochelle. And what I'm, is just, the, I'm just worried about the spray. Right, so. of course. Uh, we yeah. want that. I'm just saying if we can't get our hands on it, we, we can put precautions in place. What is the uh, status then of the cleaning schedule um, for those facilities? I know that we'd run in our cleaner more often, but if we were to bring staff back, we would have to be looking at, you know, at least high traffic things, doorknobs, those areas on a right. daily cleaning schedule. Is that possible? Uh, um, I think I can only speak for my end on the uh, fire in town hall, and we are already cleaning on top of the what the cleaning lady is doing. So well, let me let me answer that, Craig. Yeah. We have Maryland set out there. We just delayed her um, when we didn't know we were closing. We added all those extra uh, facilities. Um, we just need to call Maryland and tell her when we're opening them back up to get her back out clean. So that would be the town hall. That would be the um, zoning department, um, IT, those those areas. We just have to talk to Maryland to get her back on schedule. Okay. And Nick, I, 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 the guys will do it or the staff will do it, but if worst case, I'll walk down the hallway and wipe everything down. I have no problem with that. Yeah, I just want to make sure as we go through this, you know, I want to make sure for our employees that we have some type of protocol in place. Um, I think it's important to note that when we originally did the stay at home order, there was a lot of unknowns out there, right? Um, even the governor was, was not sure what was happening. Um, so we wanted to get everybody home so that we had time to evaluate and decide and make sure that we do everything we can to protect our employees, but also protect the public uh, while maintaining services as best as we can. Um, and I think we've done a good job of maintaining services. Um, but the question becomes, what services have we had to restrict because we haven't been able to have that public contact? Um, you know, what has been the impact on zoning of being able to issue permits as we start to get into building season? As Mike Kostinski just alluded to here, Lowe's is busy. People are stuck at home and they want things to do, so they're building things, they're doing things. Um, so are we able to provide them with the legal things that we need to be able to provide if we're teleworking and i'm not i'm not picking on mike by any means i just think for zoning they need to be in their truck driving around looking at things not that he doesn't do it but i just think of, of all people mike is probably the main that needs to come back so i mean i know uh you know i hate to say the restaurant business we're all working we're wearing gloves we're wearing masks I mean, the world has to go on and we can't it can't go on from sitting at home in a room by yourself. We have to start being together, you know, but carefully. Well, That's well, just my thoughts. And it sounds like, Craig, that you've instituted a lot of safety precautions in place. Um, and, and Cassie, our parks director, has been out and about anyways um, with the stay at home order, just checking on the parks. I mean, so this is kind of uh, normal operations for her. Um, and so, and, and I know it's hard because we have employees um, and th these are all life changing events for all of them that we have to consider as we look at this. Um, but ultimately we need to make sure we're able to provide the services we need for our citizens. Um, and I think having better access to the zoning is a big piece. Um, having Rochelle on site, I think having her so that our, who's our front desk secretary, our fire and admin secretary, having access to all of her equipment 
equipment that she needs, the larger copiers, printers, those sorts of things, um, is something that she hasn't had by teleworking. So bringing her back in allows for that. Um, and I think we have a good environment that can be controlled um, and create as safe of a place as we can. Um, and the governor has said that we can bring back government workers, we can bring back office workers. Uh, teleworking is always an option um, from the governor's standpoint, but we have to look at what's effective for us as, as, a, as a township. Um, this, Sue, oh, oh, go ahead, Mike. Nick, Nick, just to clarify one, this just involves the township employees. John's employees are his, so we, we need to let John make his own decision. Correct. Just, so, just, just for a point of clarification. Correct. Well, I, when, go ahead, when will we begin having our live township trustee meetings? When will we come back as a board in the I, community? My thoughts were that if we expect them to come back, that we have to at least come back, but not have them open to the public, but do them this way. I think we can, at least the trustees, we can all social distance in that room. You know? And maybe, you know, you know, just my thought, I think we can effectively do it. So your your idea, Mike, then is that if the employees came back, our next trustee meeting would be in person, but we still would restrict that to the public because we could not, um, because of the exceeding 10 or more people in a public gathering, the public would not be able to be in person, but we would continue this live broadcast of right. our trustee meetings and recordings of meetings. And I mean, just for added safety, we can we can wear a mask. You know, we'll just we'll follow the protocols. I mean, this is unfortunately the new world order. Sue, how are you feeling about this? What are your thoughts on the situation? Well, I've been out there through the whole thing. I just haven't been in a store since March the 10th. I've saved a lot of money, but. Um, uh, I would just assume if our employees are come back, we need to come back as a board also. I think that room is big enough that we can distance ourselves. Like we, and, and I've been wearing a mask uh, the whole time. So I would, I would be for us getting back. And like Mike said, we could still run our computer like we have right now in telemarketing for anybody that wants to plug into it and see what's going on. <clears throat> Yeah, Craig could clear out the fire bay and we could each be in one corner. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. Um, I would like, you know, John, I know your employees are separate than admin employees by statutory rules, but, you know, you're still part of this board and, and involved. Um, I would just like to hear your feedback on what we're discussing, too. Well, my feedback on that, Nick, I have a um, different kind of staff. I have I have an employee that's actually coming back from medical leave, so um, she's going to move to part time anyway. Um, one of my current other staff members coming in to the office every other day pretty much to get everything done because we she hasn't been able to do the UAN computer at home. It has to be done here at the office, the unified accounting network through the state of Ohio. So she's been here. Um, my only concern is that I was just, I just, I just don't want to be a pioneer. I want to follow the state of Ohio. So what I'm going to do here at the fiscal office, I'm going to, I'm going to keep it for the month of May. I'm going to keep my staff working the same way they're working right now. Um, Nancy is just at the end of coming back from her medical leave in the first place. Um, so that's how I'm going to proceed through the end of, end of May. That makes so sense. Yeah, so but so they're kind of teleworking, but they're still coming into the office pretty consistently. Um, they are. Yes. Been and there will be office, no but. absence of their ability. So if you, anybody needs them, they can meet with them. They can do whatever. That's just the way they've been doing it the entire time. Um, getting payroll out, getting vendor checks out, um, all of that. I just, I just kind of, I, I want to keep Nancy away from that scenario for a while as well, just because she's into a different category. Um, simply because she's coming back from medical leave and all that. So, right. Okay. Um, Roy, comments, feedback. I know your staff's always just been on site. They never really um, instituted the teleworking, but feedback uh, would be appreciated. Um, yeah, I guess, Pete, well, you mentioned from our staff perspective, we really just didn't change anything at all uh, in that regard, but. Um, I guess I would just echo some of the comments that have already been made. Uh, if there's ability to do that uh, and to do that in a safe way, I 
agree it's probably an appropriate time to start really giving that some serious consideration. I would I would echo the sentiments that have already been given. Okay. Craig, do you have anything else to add to that uh, to the discussion at this point? Um yeah, just a just a little bit. So if if we do those, I will uh, I would work with the staff to see how they want to do it. You know, as far as uh, what works best for zoning, what works best for front desk, stuff like that. Um, I think the next discussion needs to be when you guys are thinking of bringing them back, and if we if we put something in place today that that sets a date for them to come back. Um, I think we need to remove the temporary work from home order that we put in place and institute, you know, uh, full time staff is back to full time staff physically in house full time. How are well, you Craig, Craig, as you and I talked, I mean, my suggestions for everybody would be to resume work on Monday. Okay. Give them the remainder of the week to get their affairs in order and then start on Monday. So Mike, can you make that an official motion that we can kind of discuss it from there and amend if we need to? Okay, I will make a motion that we resume work on Monday. I think that would be the 11th, 11th uh, and remove the temporary stay at home order. I'll second that. All right, so what we're calling for with this is that all employees would return to work starting Monday morning, May 11th. Um, and, and it's a rescission of the teleworking order. Um, well, that I, means I would like to put it in a little different. If I can read this to you, I already had it written out, Nick. I don't mean to okay. interrupt. Uh, yeah, move, to re move to return all to work all non-essential zoning park town hall administrative effect or er, staff effective five one and remove the temporary stay at home. Um, temporary stay at home. I need a word. Um, temporary work from home. No, temporary teleworking status. Okay. That's okay. what we called it. It was a teleworking status. And I thought you said 5-1, 5-11. That's Monday. Okay. Yeah, that's Monday. Okay, 5-11 is what I meant. If I said 5-1, I apologize. 5-11, 2020. Can you read those what? departments again, please? Um, the non-essential zoning, parks, town hall administrative staff. All right, what about our essential staff? Are we still allowing essential staff to stay in a teleworking status? Because we need, because that's how we had written the original. There were two other ones. So we need to, um, we put non, actually let's just do non-essential and essential because that brings back Mike because he's salary and that brings back um, Brian because he's salary. Okay, because we had broken people out into essential and non-essential categories, right. so. Yeah, because Mike, Mike, Ladd, and Brian were essential still because they were salary employees, but they were just working from home. Um, so we do it again, move to return uh, to work all non-essential and essential zoning, parks, town hall administrative staff effective May 11th, Monday, and remove all temporary work orders from home, work from home orders. Temporary teleworking orders. Temporary teleworking. Okay. Right. Mike, is that okay with you? That was your motion. That's fine, John. Okay. Sue, are you still seconding that? Yes, I am. Okay. Nick, did you have a comment? I'm sorry to mean to cut you off. No, you're okay. I was just going to ask, is there any other comments uh, or discussion on this process? I think I only have one more thing, if I could. Yeah. Um, I will send out a written email to everybody then. You know, so make sure they have something, uh, letting know date and times on that. And uh, there was something else I was going to say, but I forget. Well, you know, I will say this um, that this is a constantly evolving situation here in the United States and Brimfield Township, everywhere, uh, the state of Ohio. Um, things do change from time to time. Uh, one motion is good as the next motion, and I think we will continue to monitor. Uh, what's happening here in Brimfield and at the state level um, and react appropriately to it. But at this point, um, you know, we're seeing people returning to work. Um, the city of Kent, when I went to meet with them for the JED meeting, their employees were all working, all their administrative staff were in-house in working at that point. 
Um, so with that said, I, th I think we're not really being the pioneer here. We're just we're following up, but you know we will be reactive to the environment, um, and and we can make changes as we see fit. But I really agree that it's time that we start to bring some people back, and and we'll continue to monitor and evaluate. Right. Okay. All those in favor, Mike. Yes. Two. Yes. Nick. Yes. Okay, motion passed. Um, just as an FYI with my staff over here, I will bring it up again at the next trustee meeting with another effective date um, to bring to the board just to kind of let you know what we're doing over here. OK. okay if anybody has any concerns along the way, just comment or you know, let me know and we'll, we'll go from there. All right. Thank, thank you, John. Nick, if we uh, do we need anything in motion to uh, resume the trust next trustee meeting or not? No, because um, we'll leave that order out there because I don't want uh, because we, the order allowed us to either do it virtually um, or in person, um, and, but to restrict the public from coming into the building. So I don't want to mess with that right now. Um, and the only reason we're not we're not restricting people from coming in because we don't want them to be part of this. We're getting as much information out there as we can, but because of the board and chamber size. Um, and then the room size, we cannot meet that capacity of having the public inside that meeting right now. So we'll okay. continue to virtually stream these. Okay. It really just comes down to a size issue for us. Okay. Do you have anything else under admin before I get into the JED? Um, I don't. That was the main discussion. All right. Um, I put in Dropbox. Everybody should have a copy of it. Um, we had our Kent JED meeting. Uh, it was a virtual meeting and then I had to head down to the office to sign checks and meet with them. Um, Mike Ladd and I both attended that. Inside of Dropbox is our first quarter uh, financials. Um, and I think this just brings up the point that we need to be thinking about financial security for the township as we move forward. Um, in January, we brought in 18,000. In February, we brought in 27,000 through the JED. And then in March we brought in eleven thousand, so we went in from we went from twenty seven thousand down to eleven thousand um, dollars in Jed dollars. Um, historically, looking at this between February and March, there's usually a little downturn in money. Um, to give you perspective, in February of two thousand nineteen, we brought in nineteen thousand. March of two thousand nineteen, we brought in seventeen thousand. So about a two thousand um, dollar drop. Uh, but we're seeing over a 50% reduction in JED dollars in one month. Um, and, and we're monitoring that. Uh, I think a lot of that is because of the hotels. They had mentioned in the JED meeting, the hotels are only seeing two to three customers a night right now. So you're losing a lot of staff out of the, those facilities um, during this COVID situation. Uh, but I wanted the board to be aware of what those financials look like. Um, Monitoring what the state of Ohio is doing. Uh, my recommendation, um, in my thoughts, at least, John, you can uh, chime in on this too. I think each department needs to be projecting a 20% budget cut. Um, not meaning that's what's going to happen right now, but operating under that idea of a 20% budget cut so we can be prepared for what may be coming down the road. I would agree with that, Nick. Um, Especially from Kent, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't expect that. Um, the only thing that's different with Talmadge is that we've had construction workers there that usually make more money than we've uh, got from the hourly Burger King workers that work over there. Um, so I, I assume that that was kind of going to stay about the same. We're not going to really see a huge loss in Talmadge. Um, we should pretty much break even to what we thought we were going to do in the budget for this year. Don't know about next year, but Kent, I would definitely agree, is gonna gonna be short. So we just have to watch with our budget dollars going forward. Um, I know all the departments right now have had um, contingency dollars sitting around, so we've had the ability to um, plan for things like this to happen. You know that would happen. So from Craig, um, Roy, and, and Dave, we just need to keep that in mind that we might be short a little bit, and we'll keep going like we are now, talking about that on a kind of a weekly basis. And I'd rather not tap into the contingency, at, let's call that our rainy day fund per se. Um, mm -hmm. If we can operate under, hey, we need to do a 20% budget cut, everybody needs to look at their budgets um, and try to reduce spending in non-essential areas by 20%. 
You know, if we pull out of this on the plus side at the end of the year, good. We have carryover balance and we can pick up those projects that we had to put on hold. But I'd rather us um, make some smart financial moves because, you know, all indications are 18 months for a potential vaccine. And that's in best case scenario. Um, so we need to be able to prepare not only for this year, but for next year financially. Hey, Nick, I've been reading lots of lots of corporate things and uh you know, just because that's the stuff I like to read and they're projecting, I think you might be a little bit low. A lot of them are shooting for 25 to 28 percent. So, so I don't know. That's just what some of the major corporations are looking at. So I don't know if we want to model ourselves. I just, I agree with you 100 percent because it's not going to be so bad this year. I'm worried about next year. Right. And I think the 20 percent is a good mark and we can adjust as we see what that next uh, disbursement is. Um, I think the corporation models are a little bit different because that's more on public spending um, compared to this is tax based dollars. Um, right. So I, I think there's going to be some differences in those models. Um, I do agree that it could be much higher, but if we get our department heads to start thinking at a 20 percent reduction and then we can evaluate that when we see these disbursements from the county and adjust to it. Uh, my goal, though, would be to try to not touch those rainy day funds if we don't have to. Yeah, the one thing I totally worry about is the amount of people paying their property taxes. And I know you know that too. You know, it's just uh, that well, might no, be. That's a different subject from the, the JED taxes right, versus right. The income taxes. And I, I would know what you're that saying. as well. I would think that the beginning of next year, we definitely have to. I mean, I'm just assuming at this point, people that haven't been working for a month and a half aren't, aren't paying their mortgage payment. I, I'm just going to assume that. So there goes our escrow dollars for taxes. And we're six months behind, so we're going to start seeing that at the end of the year. So going right. into January. So that's why I think we need to start with a 20% budget cut. Um, just try to hold hold tight at that line um, and keep keep monitoring it and evaluate it. Um, at the same time, we need all three trustees and fiscal officer uh, pushing pressure um, on our state representatives. There is financial aid supposedly coming down from the federal government, but it's going to be how the state of Ohio disperses it. Um, and if it's anything like these past dis disbursements of local government fund, we are not going to get much of this money. Um, so we need to be uh, really pushing hard on our state reps. Yeah, I have still not received a call back from, you know, Anthony office, so they're probably overwhelmed. But have yeah, you heard I will be checking into my contact um, and, and potentially if he's back in the area, maybe we can get some trustee meetings together. We can get some of the other trustees to meet with him. I know that he likes to do these public discussions. Um, the, the last round of stimulus was not aimed at local entities. He tried to get that into the bill um, in the stimulus package <coughs> 5. Uh, but stimulus package four is when they're indicating that money's going to come. So that's what's on the discussion floor now. So we need to push for them to try to um, set some stipulations on how that gets dispersed from the federal level to help control how the state of Ohio does it. Otherwise, the county and, and the larger cities are going to take all the money again. Yep. Um, Mike, do you have anything you want to add to the JED meeting discussion? Uh, no, I mean, uh, you, you pretty much hit it on the head. We were up a little bit. I, I, Nick, I don't have the sheet in front of you. I think it was 21,000 we were ahead for the first quarter, though, So which which wasn't too bad. Yeah. Yeah, we were ahead the first quarter, uh, which is good, but we took a major loss. So we would have been really far ahead uh, for in March. We so would have been going to go into that, I think, in the April payments here. Correct. All right, um, I just wanted to give an update and a report on the JED so everybody was aware where we stood at. Thank you. Anything else under admin? If not, we'll turn the meeting over to Mike Ladd for zoning. Okay, thank you. I just want to make every, everybody clear that I, I have been coming out at least two to three times a week. Um, the other day I had to shut down uh, somebody selling masks on the corner of 43 and 18. Um, didn't have permits for it. Uh, so we are monitoring those type of situations and I want everybody to be aware if there is a temporary vendor on your lot to to go ahead and get the, the proper permits. Um, BZA meeting will be uh, the first week of June. Uh, we're drafting the agenda right now. We have five conditional use and six variance applications. Pride one at Prescott Pike Redwood is under construction. 
Meyer is planning to open July the 4th. I had conversations with Meyer's uh, director of, of uh, buildings and land uh, out of Michigan. He says he just can't get the, the store stocked. If he could get it stocked earlier, they will open it earlier. But as of now, they plan on opening after July the 4th. Um, they are planning a soft opening, no ribbon cutting at this time. Comprehensive land plan, I'm working with Todd Peets to continue doing that, I'm concentrating still on the GC area of 43. Uh, we have five submittals in that area on 43 from churches to the nursing home to actual residential homes off of how, um, but it's zone GC. So I'm, I'm working through those issues. Five below continues to be under construction. Uh, I do request board approval to have the prosecutor pursue legal action against the junkyard at 4972 State Route 43, known as Town Center Automotive. We have sent them several letters. I seen this originally when I went behind uh, the outpost because the outpost had asphalt grinding sitting back there uh, for a while and they were dumping. Uh, as you go back there, you could see that this, this has been looking at history 20 to 25 years of a junkyard. It's about time we, we get that cleaned up. So at this time, I'd request board approval to have the prosecutor pursue this legally. I will make a motion um, to have the pro prosecutor pursue legal action against the property at 4972 State Route 43, known as Town Center Automotive, uh, for the storage of junk vehicles and the creation of a junkyard. I will second that for discussion. Um, Mike, uh, when we send these um, to the prosecutor, uh, just like we talked on the phone the other day, I just want to make the rest of the board aware. Um, we're going to start We've been tracking these on the spreadsheet, but we're going to start tracking on a spreadsheet how many times we contact the prosecutor about these uh, specific cases every Friday, um, because it seems like we're doing our work on our end. We're getting cases sent to him um, for zoning violations, but he's not getting them moved through the court system. Um, so I just, you know, I just want to reiterate just so the other two board members are aware that we're going to start tracking those dates. And if we're not seeing a movement on it, then we'll progress this to the commissioner's level. And I, and I was I drove by it yesterday. It looks like they're trying to clean it up now. It, it must have been from you you doing something, Mike. I'm not sure, but it looked like they're cleaning up parts of it. Yeah, I mean we we've sent them several letters, um, but it's it's still time we we start taking legal action. This is gonna it's not a, a small undertaking. This is gonna take a long time to get this cleaned up. Uh, a lot of money. Uh, involved in cleaning that. There is so much back there. I, I can't believe that we haven't got complaints with rodents in that, that spot. Right. The only cleaning I saw them doing was all those cars parked out on the outpost property. Okay. So, but there's still a lot of cars. There still is. And Mike, when you send that weekly report to the prosecutor's office, can you ensure that you carbon copy me on that too? Um, I would yeah. send them a spreadsheet and just ask Give me an update on all these and just make it a reoccurring event every Friday. Um, yeah. And I think, uh, what do you think is a good time frame, uh, Mike, as we follow up on these, uh, both Ladd and Kaczynski and Sioux Fields? I think we give the prosecutor a month to start getting some movement. Otherwise, we move it forward. I would suggest a month, but maybe he should carbon copy all the trustees in fiscal office so they know we're all watching it. It's up to I you. Would, I, I mean, I'm fine with whoever. I just want to make sure at least one of us was on that list. Right. So that if you'd like that, we can do that. Yeah, they need to come back to work too. I don't know what they're, you know, what they're doing, but we. Uh, right. So we have the motion on the floor for the cleanup of the junkyard and the sending of this to the prosecutor. Uh, John, can you get us a roll call on that? All those in favor, Mike. Yes. Two. Yes. Hey. Yes. Motion passed. Okay, and in our permit fee report, uh, we're at $59,010. We're right on track, similar to the previous year as far as permits. We have one that's going to be a big one that, that will um, keep us right in line where we were last year, and that's the nursing home. Still working with the architects on that. Um, 
so we should be okay with permits for now and we'll see how the rest of the year goes it that's looks like one up that's the one up on the holiday inn property that's the one on 43 in malloy oh okay what about the holiday inn property nothing so far on the holiday inn property okay well at least if we get this one are they looking at trying to break ground this year mike on the 43 and malloy property they had told they have told me they want to start groundbreaking prior to the end of july okay and i think that would just from a financial standpoint that would help us because we'd get those construction wages in that jed um for a period and that might help us at least balance out some so yeah. um, i think it's important if we can keep pushing on that that piece correct is i've got it? several submittals for 43. Uh, one is a survival store yeah uh, another is a church and then i have the three homes with and then the nursing home as well so we do have a proposal uh for sheets coming in um i don't want to disclose where that that is right now because it's it's not exactly fit in the the zoning district that they're they're pushing to get in but but sheets is very interested on 43. okay okay then that nursing home is that a fairly large facility yes there's 100 beds. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Other than that, everything looks good. The the Myers gas station should be opening here shortly. So. All right. Well, thank you for the report. Any other questions for Mike? Hearing none, we will now move into the road department. Dave, the floor is yours. Got to unmute Dave. How about now? Hey Dave. He's good. Oh, okay. Man, computers, you know how that goes. I uh, just want to let everybody know that uh, we started back up full staff this week in the road department. Uh, that way we can start doing a bunch of these culvert jobs we have out there. Uh, the asphalt plants will not be open until tomorrow in this area. Uh, we put all of our salt equipment away and fluid filmed them. That way everything's in storage and ready to go for next, well, this year, fall and fall. Hopefully I don't need it this weekend. Uh, getting stone in, do some of uh, the chip and seal from last year's project. They're actually hauling the stone into our shop right now to get it set up to ready to go. Uh, we took some time and we went, since the dog park was closed, we went ahead and put some seed and fertilizer down on that property to try to reboost the grass for the dogs ain't tearing it up right now. Uh, we're getting ready to do some of the cemetery work in there to do the foundations and clean up the grave sites and get some things straightened out in the cemetery. Uh, I just want to let the trustees know next week I want to start 10 hour days with the guys, which would be Tuesday through Friday. If everybody's all right with that, I don't, <laughs> we've been doing this for the last few years. Yeah, I think Dave, I think that's your uh, choice. Okay, well, I just, I just want to let you all know we're going to start that next week. Uh, we may have to bounce it around a little bit to schedule depending on like Henry's chip and seal work. I may have to bring guys in and have them work like say Monday through Thursday, you know, balance it where I'm not putting out overtime for this. Uh, now into the fun part. After what Nick said earlier, it's kind of made me nervous. So now <laughs> here we go. Uh, I need the trustees approval for the following. Uh, we just got the prices and stuff in for the Sterling Green and Chapman Farm subdivision paving project, which came out to $273,483.50. That would be to replace the, some curb gutter, fix some uh, catch basins, uh, mill out the worst spots in the road, full depth repairs, and a uh, top surface of an inch and a half. They'll mill it down, then put an inch and a half back to do both allotments. So I don't know if I need approval from that point to okay the money. Or do I go to the next part? Well, what we need to do on that first day, that was that was from Portage County. We got to yeah. get the bid book together. That right. might not be the price. It actually could be less than that. They're going to send the bid book out. So what we need to do is get the a resolution passed to send the to have Portage County put a bid book together so we can send that out. 
And then we'll approve the the paving project after we get bids in. Okay, so I just move on to the next step of the advertising. Well, no, we need uh, to get a bid book first, though, Dave. I don't think you have that on your list. Add it on my list? I don't think you so, have it on your list. So we're requesting, so I'll make a motion for approval for Sterling Green and Chapman Farms paving project to be sent to Portage County engineers for the creation of a bid book to receive bids. And I will okay. second that. Any questions on that? All those in favor, Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Okay. Yes. Motion passed. Okay, on the next part of this, we would like to start advertising it on May 15th and May 22nd. Put it in the paper and put it out there. Okay, so they'll have the bid books ready by then, correct? Yes. Okay, what's okay. the date? May 15th and May 22nd. Okay, well, I will I will make that motion, providing we get the bid books and back in time. I'll second it. Any discussion? I think, Dave, this is a great thing. There will be a, a lot of residents very happy with this. So I'm glad you guys and you and John worked good with the money and when at the and the bids came back great. It just uh, it's a great thing. Thank yeah, you. They came, they came in lower than what we were expecting. So the price of this. So uh, and then well, on the motion, hang on, we have a motion on the floor. All those uh, in favor, Mike. Yes. Sue. Yes. Nick. Yes. Motion passed. Go ahead, Dave. Sorry about this. this is all kind of new to me. Uh, I'd like to set the dates for the bid opening for the project on June 3rd at 7.45 a.m. before the meeting starts. That's how we've done it in the past. 15 minutes before a trustee meeting. Okay. Um, I will make a motion for bid opening June 3rd, 2020 at 7.45 a.m. For the Sterling Green and Chapman Farms. I will second that. Um, uh, just uh, hang on, John, just for discussion. Um, if we're still under this order, um, we will televise this also as a separate meeting. Um, so for those that want to watch the bid opening, they may have to do it through um, electronic media. Uh, I just want to put that out there. Uh, Real quick on that too, Nick. Uh, Mike Collins said that he could help us if, if we're still into this situation to set it up virtually for the guys with the bids or whatever. You know what I mean? To help that part out if we need to, what the county's using. So, yeah, what we'll probably do is just do it through um, Teams because they don't speak anyway. So they just need to be able to view. So we'll have IT create uh, two events that day. Uh, one will be a bid opening event, and then we'll exit that meeting and move into a regular meeting. Okay. All right. Any other discussion on that? If not, I need a roll call, John. All those in favor, Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Nick? Yes. Motion passed. Uh, per discussion with Mike Collins again from the county, uh, we have money left over in our Army Pro contract, and we could use them as inspectors on this job. Just have them continue from the chip and seal to this project. Uh, I just need a board approval if we have money left to reuse them with the current contract we have with them. Um, I will make the motion for OmniPro contract as an inspector on the Chapman Farm Sterling Green project. We need a second for discussion. I will second that. Can I add into that here? Shouldn't we, even if we don't have money, I know OmniPro was good, shouldn't we just use them anyway as the inspector? That, yeah, and that's how I used that. That's how I worded the motion that we would use them. Okay. Uh, per, by my Collins, by the time we're done with our other project, we should have plenty left for them to be covered under this. My question is though, this is why I wanted the discussion point on this is how do you feel about them, Dave? Are they, is the work, work been adequate? Are you getting good feedback and reports? Because um, I don't want to continue contracting with somebody that we don't want to work with. No, no, I've actually have a real good rapport with these guys. They they give me callbacks, let me know things that are happening. 
and that kind of stuff. So I, I feel real comfortable with them. Okay. I mean, you're the one who has to work with them, so that's why I just kind of put it in your field. I want to make sure you were okay with that. I didn't want to do it just because we had money left over in that contract. Right. No, I, I feel real comfortable with these guys. They do a pretty good job. And this, I, how do you put it? This job will actually be a little easier on them because it's in one location instead of all over the township like we've been doing. Okay. Is there any other questions or comments from the board? No, oh, I think it's good. Hey, all, right, those, no. all those in favor, Mike? Yes. Who? Yes. Nick? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, uh, then the next thing I need board approval for, uh, Mike Collins figured this was just the easiest way to do this, to get everything done at one time. For if there is another problem later on, uh, the, Mo the Malloy Road and Selnick OPWC project that we have moving forward with uh, the state, which we're doing a 50-50 split on, he would like to put the advertisement dates June 12th and June 19th of 2020. Okay, so I'll make a motion to advertise or do we need approval for the OPWC project first? I, I, I don't think we do. I think they do that. Yeah. I think that's how it is. Okay, so we just need to advertise them. We don't need to do the approval. Right. All right, so I'll make a motion for the advertisement of the Molloy Road and Selnick OPWC projects to be June 12th and June 19th. How will second? Um, just for discussion, uh, Dave, so they want to push this all the way out to June. What was the reason for that again? Well, because of the bid opening you can't do until July 1st. We won't have the funding until then. Uh, that's, that's the only reason Mike gave me was for that to hold off for a couple another month or two well okay. another month so and i'm fine with that i just i just want i was wondering if there was a reason and there obviously is we won't have money until july one so i hope we keep your fingers crossed it doesn't get cut <laughs> right well and it could so because there was like i said there's 750 million cut right all right any questions from the board on that motion no hey all those in favor mike yes Two. Yes. Nick. Yes. Motion passed. Uh, and the last thing I have for you it would be the bid opening mm -hmm. would be the July 1st at 7.45 a.m. meeting before the trustee meeting. Okay, if so I, I will make a motion for bid opening of the Malloy Road and Selnick OPWC project to be July 1, 2020 at 7.45 a.m. I will second. Any questions or discussion on that? Nope. All right, all in favor. All those in favor, uh, Mike? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Motion passed. Okay, and that's all I got for my report today, and thank you. All right, thank you, Dave. Be safe out there. Trying. All right, we'll move into uh, Parks and Rec is next. Cassie, the floor is yours. All right, hello, can everybody hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Um, so I have a couple items um, for discussion regarding parks closures and cancellations. Um, so the first item is um, rentals for the community center and pavilions are continuing to be canceled on a rolling two week basis. So um, as really I haven't had to make a lot of cancellations, most people seem to be doing it on their own and we are refunding um, money for that. Um, so we're just kind of taking that on a two week basis um, for now. Um, my first item of discussion is um, the dog park at Cranberry Creek is currently closed um, and I wanted to see what your thoughts are on keeping that closed or possibly reopening it. I guess this is for the board and Dave. Um, the dog park is fairly small so it'd be difficult to social distance but on the flip side of that every time I've ever seen anyone at the dog park it's rarely more than two or three people. I so, agree with you. Yep. 
Um, so I think my recommendation would be to reopen it. Um, but I do actually have signage up um, regarding social distancing and limiting gatherings of 10 people. So I, I, I don't think I've ever seen 10 people in the dog park. So um, I don't know what your thoughts on that would be. I think it's I think it's something that we need to bring back. I would put up a sign that uh, stresses social distancing. I mean, but it's a it's something we have. But it, Dave said he's just replanted grass, so maybe work with Dave. Yeah. You know, Dave, would you be Come able up. to? Well, no, you really can't. And the, well, I mean, yeah, I don't know. You you two work together. Okay. Well, I was gonna. I was going to say, we put that grass seed and stuff down last week. Okay. So, I mean, fertilizer should be worked into the ground by the rain. It should be gone where there's nothing problem with the animals. It was just we overcast the seed mm -hmm. to try to thicken the grass back up. Uh, I would like to wait maybe until maybe, say, if we decide to do it beginning of next week, where yeah. it gives me a chance to spray chemicals around everything. And that way it's, you know, I mean, absorbed into the plants and gone. It'll give us a, a few rains on top of that to wash any residue away. So okay. I would like to wait, if anything, until at least the beginning of next week sometime. Okay, yeah. Cassie, okay. would you be okay pushing out to the 18th? That just gives Dave a week and a half for him to get out there and be able to get that work done. And then we get that open to the public at that point. Yeah, absolutely. I know Dave and I have discussed um, potentially closing the dog park on a, um, every few months for maintenance anyway. So now is a good time to do that. So that might be something we do in the future just for a week, maybe in the spring, in the fall, just to maintain everything. So, okay. Um, so then May 18th. Sounds, Sounds good. good. We want to make a motion to open that then on May 18th? And we open uh, it? I'll make that motion. I will make a motion that we open up the dog park. On May 18th. Second. I would let's just make that. sure. Let's just make sure we get a sign put up, Nick, you know, and all yeah. that. I think maybe we ought to consider having some signs made up for all the parks. Yeah, that would be really helpful. I think and make it a big job. So yeah, I think we need nice metal signs uh, made yep. for this. I mean, just so we can get them put up that talks about the social distancing requirements, you know, however you want to word that, but we should put those, you know, by you, that that there is a social distancing requirement within these locations. Yeah, that would. Um, that's, oh, sorry. Um, that's what they, they, a they, lot of the things I'm talking about, too. I think they should be fairly permanent because this is going to be with us for a while. Yeah, that's yeah. why I said we should invest in some nice metal signs um, to place at those locations. That's an essential piece for the work that we're doing right now. Um, so getting those posted, then this gives you time to get those signs made before the 18th, too, if we can try okay. to get those up. Okay. Cassie, just send that to, to Craig over to, to her. Okay. All okay. right, I'll draft something up. Okay, I need a, uh, all those in favor. Roll call. Yep. Mike. Yes. Up to. Yes. Okay. Yes. Motion pass. Sorry about that. I kind of had a brain freeze for a minute. Okay. Um, my next item regards um, taking reservations for the community center. Um, I have had a few people asking about reservations for late May and early June. Um, my personal opinion is that is maybe a little too early. Um, I had yeah a reservation for June fifth. Someone wanted to make, and I just said I. I don't know. I can't tell you. I can't. I've been taking reservations for August and September as of right now, but I personally feel like May should definitely not be taking any reservations for May. June is still kind of up in the air. Um, I just wanted your opinion on that and to see if we shouldn't be taking those right now. Well, you know, one of my questions that I would ask is who does the liability fall upon for the social distancing? So somebody wants to rent this and we will rent it to them and they bring in 20 people. Well, where does that liability fall? That's the first question I think we need right. to figure out. But the bigger question that I have then is what exposure is that bringing to you and anybody else of our staff that need to go down into that building to clean up after them? Right. Um, you know, we 
we need to protect the public, but we also need to protect our employees. And so mm -hmm. I'm just I'm cautious about running it. That's my personal opinion. Um, Mike and Sue, how do you feel? What do you think we should be doing with these rental properties at this point? I would I just think it's I agree. I think it's a little too early, Nick. I think I personally would maybe go till at least June. I mean, I hate to rush, you know, I agree with you. We're gonna be spending more money having the place cleaned and and I have not even heard a lot about cleaning protocols. I mean, is, is it, does it mean we're gonna have to spray everything down or is it just wiping? I don't know. You know, I mean, what, we've already closed it this long. What would another month matter? Right, and there there is still the um, social gatherings order in place, so I didn't even think about that, honestly, um, because I highly doubt that anyone would be renting the community center for a gathering of 10 or less people, unless it was for a meeting. Um, yeah, and the cleaning. And what, what, Cassie, if I can cut you off, what I've yeah. noticed with our with our catering division, everyone is canceling. Yeah. And what they're doing is they're pushing. I mean, we're going to have the busiest winter and fall season we've ever had because yeah. everyone is pushing it. And I, and I I still think there's a degree of uncertainty with a lot of people that don't want to be there. We just had a bride call yesterday, and her extended family. She had a 250 person wedding. Only 75 people said they could come. Yeah. And that was mid June. Mm -hmm. So I think, I really think people are gonna be very cautious. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I would not be comfortable, I don't think taking any additional reservations, but I would continue to handle the, um, the ones we already have on file um, on a two week basis. So if things do open up, um, we could do that. Yeah, I would agree. Sue, do you have any input? Well, I've I've been out and about, and um, even in my own family, they don't even want to get together with us. So I know there's a lot of apprehension out there. I think a lot depends on Governor DeWine, and um, also they're looking at is this this virus going to raise its ugly head and come back with a revenge on the second. So or in a second round. So I, I would really I'm looking at September before things even start before we even begin to start doing much of anything. OK. OK, so then um, for May and June, then I will just not take any additional reservations and we can revisit towards the middle of June if things seem to change either way. OK, um, my next item um, is a sad item. Um, touch a truck is the next thing on my mind, um, which was scheduled for June 20th. Um, following the lead of other nearby cities, I believe that it would be a wise decision to probably cancel touch a truck for this year. Um, last year we had an estimated 250 to 300 people um, for that event, and I just don't think we will be ready by then to do that. Yeah, there's just two. I mean, a touch truck was an event that's really important to me. I really enjoy it. I think it was a great family event. But at this point, the idea of telling a bunch of people to touch trucks <laughs> um, when we're supposed to be social distancing, it just isn't going to happen. Um, I tried to right. hold out as long as we could on this, but that is kind of where we're at right now. Yeah, I had a few um, vendors that I would need to contact, so I'd like to do that sooner than later. Um, mm -hmm. I know we had discussed Nick on the phone um, doing a virtual touch a truck, um, some sort of up close and personal video with all the different lights and switches and some facts about the vehicle. So that might be something we can do. Yeah, I would like to keep the event in people's minds, just like we're doing with Memorial Day with virtual services. Um, I'd like to try to do a virtual touch a truck where we do a video of some of the equipment we have, uh, the cruisers, the fire engine, ambulance, dump trucks, backhoe, whatever. Um, and that gives, and I think it's a good project for you and Rochelle to work on um, during this COVID situation. And then we'll just release that video um, on Facebook and YouTube the day of Touch a Truck. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, yes, and then I, thank you. Oh, we ahead. need a motion for that. Yeah. Who wants to make a motion? I, I will make the motion. Okay. So I will yeah. second that. All those in favor, Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Okay. Yes. Motion passed. Sorry, Cassie. 
Um, my last item was an item that I added yesterday afternoon as, after it was brought to my attention um, regarding the baseball fields. Um, I went to just check the fields and noticed that people had been playing on them. Um, I don't know whether this was a team or whether this was an individual, but I did notice that the baselines were marked out and cleats were worn when it was on, um, when they were on the field, making me believe that it was some sort of official practice. Um, there is, with the order that is issued right now, um, all organized sports leagues are prohibited. So, um, and the people that have, um, I've contacted the people who have paid to rent the field, um, and they have all, it seems like Brimfield, Mogador, the teams that I have contacted have already canceled all their sports leagues anyway. So I'm not sure which team it would have been um, if it was an organized team that would have been using the field. But the field is open on a first come, first serve basis. Um, the issue with this being uh, that it is very difficult to social distance when you are using the field, when you're playing baseball. Um, a baseball team is, isn't it, nine plus people anyway? So it'd be kind of difficult to do. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on um, keeping the field open, closing it off. I know Dave and I had discussed, we don't want to you know, partition it off because it would make it difficult for him to mow. But um, maybe just some additional signage on the field. I do have signs up in the display case on the field, but maybe some of the additional signs like we would have at the dog park would be a good solution for that. Yeah, I would agree. I think we just, whatever signs you get for the dog park, we add some throughout all of our park facilities, including the baseball field. I mean, we can't police everybody. People need to make some decisions on their own, but as long as we're not making the rentals, we're not encouraging it. Okay, okay. Hey, Dave, can you, can you become kind of hey, a hey, you park a dump truck in the middle of the field? <laughs> I can do it. It might make a mess. <laughs> well, that also, kinda, isn't that kind of Roy's office out there to see if anybody's out there breaking the state rule if they saw anybody it's about the only thing we could do yeah i don't i don't know how much we really can police that right so i think it's more um we what as long as we a, do due diligence we got to put signage up and then it's on the people right 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 is it uh, hey dave is that uh, them playing is it destroying the field not truthfully i haven't really paid attention to it i mean cassie let me know i was going to look at it today uh-oh, I got lost. But I, I haven't noticed nothing being destroyed. No, it does worry me because we haven't been maintaining the field as regularly as we would when we had regular teams there. Um, and it does worry me people kind of using it. I, I would assume that it was used over the weekend and it was kind of not, oh, well, it was pretty warm over the weekend. So, um, yeah, as long as people, you're right, we can't really control what they do. But as long as we do our due diligence and put up signage, that's all we can really come to. Looks like we're having some technical difficulties with the video feed, but the audio is still working so we can continue the meeting. They just won't see our faces. Okay. Um, Cassie, real quick on this. Um, with the baseball field, did you get a chance to look at to see if we need any uh, maintenance done on those? Uh, yeah, there, there are some um, weeds coming up. Um, so that's something that Dave and I discussed. Okay. Just because we spent however many thousand dollars last year to get that baseball field redone, even though we don't have teams playing, uh, John, I think this will be essential spending this year to maintain that field so that we don't have to reinvest all that next year. Oh, we definitely need to do that or it'll be like the backfield that we have that'll all be overgrown and we'll have to right. start all over. So, so we got that special top coat. So whatever, Cassie, whatever you need to do, reach out and get some quotes to get that prepped for play this year, even though people aren't playing on it. Let's maintain that to the status that we invested in. Okay. Just writing that down so I don't forget. Okay. Um, my second item um, is that I will need board approval for um, installation of a new air conditioner at the community center. Uh, we got a quote from SAFCO Heating for um, $3,344, and um, I'm requesting that that money come out of the NOPEC grant, if that is available. Is this the 2019 will remaining money or the 2020? This would be 2020. Okay. And was that... Uh, I, 
I just have a question on that first, though. Did we? Do you want me to make a motion first, John, and then? Well, no, because I didn't know we were doing that yet. And I know we were doing some stuff with Dave in regards to that. Was that part of, Craig, did you work that out with Dave? Uh, I did not work that out with Dave unless someone's come to you above what I know. There should be about $7,000 left. So I, I, there should be enough money. If there's not, we just don't do it. But I just, uh, this is the first time hearing about it. Okay, yeah, that's I just, fine. I, make I just knew that there was money left. Okay. And that's 100% paid for, just so you know. I know, I just didn't okay. know where, where the money had gone with Dave because I know he was trying to get a big chunk of the the money from the uh, no pet grant. So, okay. With, okay. with what's left over, we should have about 7,000. Okay. All right. Mike, well, I'm going to go up. ahead and make that motion to replace the uh, air conditioner at the community center. Not I'll to exceed. That. Not to exceed what? It was $3,344. dollars what did you say, John? 3400 bucks. Thirty-five hundred. Thirty-five hundred. Thirty-five. Hey, all those. Go ahead. Sorry, not to jump in there, but Dave, are you still on? Is there anything else that you had come forward with that I didn't know about, or? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. This thing's going wacko over here. Uh, no, I still just the proposal. My. Uh, Three heaters and an air conditioning unit put in. We've already put that into the budget thing of the NOPEC. Okay, so, so I just didn't know if there was a surprise that I didn't know about. So, no, we should be good, John. All right. All those in favor? Mike? Yes. Two? Yes. Nick? Yes. Motion passed. All right, and then my last item is just an informational piece that I've been working with um, Andrea Ireland from the National Park Service um, on some trail mapping and trail improvements. Uh, we received a technical grant from the from the National Park Service in 2016, I believe, and she's just continuing um, with that work and filling me in on some of the work that had been done in the past. So she's been uh, very helpful. And I'm meeting her with her again virtually tomorrow on that. So, and that is all I have. All right. Thank you so much, Cassie. Uh, we will turn this over to the cemetery. Uh, number one on the cemetery is cemetery hours. I believe, Dave, this was a topic for you. Ah, uh, yeah. Here I go again. Uh, I just wanted to let the uh, board know I would like to change the hours of the cemetery. Tuesday through Friday. Uh, with us going on 10 hour days, this way we wouldn't have absorbed overtime on Mondays, which we only have one or two funerals through the year on Monday anyway. But so far with the pandemic going on, we haven't been doing funerals on Saturday anyway because of the large gatherings that come on a Saturday funeral. We had one Saturday funeral, we had 15 cars show up with, uh, you know, between 25 and 30 people. And we, I feel it's not safe for my guys to be there with that many people would just come in because of the group. And like I said, I'm trying to cut back some on overtime expenses right now too with this because like we all know coming later this year, we may be in a little bit of financial trouble. So I just feel it wouldn't be a problem to have funerals between Tuesday and Friday. I just try to get everybody's opinion on this. Okay, I'm going to make a motion that we limit the cemetery hours uh, for Tuesday through Friday. And I just need a second for discussion. Second. Uh, I'll, uh, yep. Two seconds. Um, well, I think we need to clarify that motion to uh, cemetery hours for burials because the cemetery itself is is open. Oh, yeah. You know, I just agree. clarification purpose there. Yes, I got it. Um, well, I, my, my only question is how many, you know, do you get a lot of Saturday requests? I just, I worry about those families that are already kind of in a bad position with the passing of a family member and now they have to do this through Monday through Friday. Maybe they can't get off work. What, you know, we don't know everybody's scenario. Uh, I just want to make sure we're kind of being cognizant of that also. Well, I know, I mean, the cemetery has been extremely busy right now. 
Uh, but like I said, most of the funerals have been short term. It's just been a small grouping of people between the normal work week. So, I mean, as, as the summer comes on, I mean, I yeah, we'll probably have more and more. I was just looking at an aspect of for a short more period until we know what's going on with this pandemic. I don't, because we've been in that so mode, So you're right? saying temporary. So you're saying right. a temporary thing. Say, if, say, all of a sudden the wine starts clearing things up where there's a little bit bigger gatherings than 10. I mean, I know cemeteries, you can have more than 10 people come to the thing as long as you do the social distancing stuff. But I'm just trying, one, to avoid my guys to be in around a group of 50 to 60 people showing up all of a sudden and keeping us on the safe side for at least right now until some different orders come out. Well, and if I, I mean, can jump in there too, from a budgeting perspective as well, that's those guys aren't working on Mondays. So that calls two of them back for three hours each time that we have to do that. So it can start getting a little costly. So I think during this initial situation, as we evaluate it, one motion is good as the next. So I would be okay with initially doing this, but we need to monitor it. Um, so Dave and Rochelle, if we're getting lots of Saturday requests, uh, I'm just asking you to bring it to the board if we see that, and then, and then we can have a discussion and reevaluate that. Um, because, you know, I'm just trying to be, you know, supportive of those families that, that are in a difficult situation. I mean, the COVID is already making it hard for them to have services. Okay, no, I understand that because, like I said, this ain't something I want to make permanent. It's just until things calm down a little more. Okay, no, I'm good with that. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, we keep monitoring the situation. I mean, but I would like, I mean, the Saturday one, I'd be opened up to the reopening, say if things clear up. I still would like to just Monday, not have services on Monday though. And I'm good with that. The, the only one that made me a little apprehensive is, is the weekend. I think for now we close the weekend piece, but if we see a lot of requests for that, or we're getting some pushback, then we need to maybe discuss that. Okay. Makes sense. Okay, all those in favor, Mike? Yes. Who? Yes. Nick. Yes. Motion passed. This brings us to uh, cemetery number two, pioneer section sign. Sue, this is you. Right. Well, what we have is our settlers are up in that section. And um, I wanted to get meet with my cemetery committee and uh, have, have us design some type of a special metal sign that indicates that is our pioneer or our settlers up in that area. We could even put in the date of the, the dates, of the last date that anybody was buried there, which would be back in the 1800s, but um, kind of designate that as a special place within Restland Cemetery. So how much do you think a sign like that would cost if you guys were looking at that? Do you have any ideas? Mm, not right at this point. Um, I would say it probably wouldn't be any more than, say, 400 at the most. It wouldn't be a big sign, but it would be one of those solid metal ones that lasts forever and ever. I, so can, check with the, I can check with the trophy place over in Akron because I have been there before for the Boy Scouts and uh, come up with a price or a quote or something of that nature. Yeah, John, could we just have them meet and then Sue bring it back whenever they have a design and cost and we can discuss and see how that falls under the budget at that point. Yeah, uh, that's, that's good. I'll just to put one out there, just a blank one so she could start, but it doesn't matter however you want to do it. And is, and even though we're, you know, we're bringing people back in, we still want to try to virtually do things. I mean, meeting, working in our office is one thing. Meeting face to face is hard, um, you know, to maintain that social distancing, Sue. So do it how you want but i would suggest getting with brian and have him just create a teams meeting for you guys and you could meet over this to try to help with the social okay. distancing um or you can you know i'll check with uh, i'll check with portage monument too i'm sure they deal with some things like that for cemetery stuff so we'll get we'll get a couple quotes and the design and whatever and come back we're with just, you we're just going to table it for right now yeah i'm table it for right now all right Okay. All right, so Sue's moving on with that. That brings us to fiscal office. Uh, John, we have uh, number one and number two is you. Yep, I got two items here. There, last 
virtual meeting we had, I had the amounts and rates that we didn't, um, we had on the agenda, but we had to table it simply because I was still waiting on something from the county and it came in 10 minutes after I told us to table it. So um, what you had in that check um, folder yesterday, so Sue and Nick, you should both have it, um, yep. is the official certified estimate of resources, the, um, the uh, budget dollars and the amounts and rates um, for inside millage. I need to get that approved. I put a copy of what the resolution looks like behind it. Um, so all we're going to in sense do is take this exact information that they gave, gave us and insert it into our resolution. So I just need a, a motion to approve the amounts and rates for 2020. Okay, I'll make that motion. I'll second that motion. Okay. And this is just our normal. This comes from the county, correct? This is right. yeah. by them. Yeah, yeah, it's every year we do the same thing. Um, Are there any comments or questions or anything you want to add to that, John, before we vote on it? I do not. Okay. Um, uh, I reviewed that last night. Um, and I was good with it. So, John, if you want to call a roll call. All those in favor, Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Nick? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Um, the second one is the 2020 final appropriations that we have that came back from the auditor. That was the second um, folder that you had. Um, I do just want to point out one thing with this. Um, all these numbers that come back on the budget, they all have to do with estimated revenues that we think we're going to receive. So each year that we do that, it's just a good educated guess, and that's what the county's doing on a good educated guess. So they just finalized 2020's final appropriations. This year in particular, I, I don't know how much all this even makes any sense because we're not going to collect as much as we thought because of the COVID stuff. The way the budget works, though, is that we can't spend more money than we collect. So we're just approving the final appropri or appropriations for 2020, and we monitor those every, every payroll is what we do. So I need a motion to... A, approve the final appropriations for 2020. I'll make a motion to approve the final appropriations for 2020. We need a second. I will second it. Uh, discussion. I think this is a really a, an important topic that you just said there, John. Um, I think all the department heads, we just got to watch these dollars um, because even though we appropriated this and this is what we were expecting to spend, like we'd mentioned, we're looking at at least probably a 20% budget cut across that. So, um, just because it says it on the piece of paper doesn't mean that's what's coming in. Thank you, Nick. Um, all those in favor, Mike? Yes. Two? Yes. Nick? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Uh, anything else for the fiscal office? Nope. We have no executive sessions today. Anything else for the good of Brimfield Township? Well, I have a question for Dave Ruffner for Memorial Day, and I just wondered if we're going to put the flags on the cemetery for the military guys. Uh, yeah, we're going to do everything the same as normal for the cemetery when we putting the flags up and everything else. Okay, good. And Sue, I don't know, I don't think we've talked, um, but Rochelle and Cassie are both working on his project. Since we can't have an in-person service, we're going to do a virtual service. So we've reached out to people that would normally be there for the service. Um, we have some pa pastors speaking um, and some other people. We're going to put together a video and we're going to release a virtual service um, on Memorial Day to honor all those people. Oh, that's wonderful. Good. Yeah. yeah, so we're still trying to find a way to, to make sure that, that we honor and remember those. Okay, thank you. Anything else? If not, I need a motion to end the adjourn the meeting. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Mike, um, all those yes. in favor, Mike? Sue? Yes. 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 Okay, Everyone be safe. 9.34. Everyone be safe and have a great day. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.